Welcome biologists to this session where we're going to take a look at the adaptations of xerophytes and hydrophytes. So let's take a look at xerophytes to start off with. One of the adaptations they have is that they can have rolled leaves. Now this is like the marron grass that you would find on sand dunes, especially on the English shore. Now the reason why they have rolled leaves, as you can see in this picture here, is because they reduce the surface area for evaporation of water vapour through the stomata. They also, by having these rolled leaves, is we trap a layer of water vapour in this area here. Now, if we're trapping a layer of water vapour close to the stomata, it means that we're creating a high water vapour potential outside of the stomata, therefore reducing the water vapour potential gradient, reducing the evaporation of water from the leaf or water vapour from the leaf. It's really important we use the term water vapour when describing these adaptations in order to get as many marks as possible. So some of them also have hairy leaves and these are exactly the same reasons why. So to trap a layer of water vapour, they create a high water vapour potential outside of the stomata, therefore reducing the water vapour potential gradient and therefore reducing the evaporation of water vapour from the leaf or via the stomata. The next one is sunken stomata. So as you can see in this particular example here, the stomata here are in this almost like kind of pit area if you like. Um, so normally in a, in a normal leaf that is not a xerophyte, you'd find the stomata kind of here on the bottom of the leaf. But in the, in the sunken stomata area, you kind of get this pit-like structure on the inside. So sunken stomata, and again, exactly the same kind of idea. It's to trap a layer of water vapour, so that the wind or wherever it is can't take it away as easily. Uh, therefore, we get that high water vapour potential gradient outside of the stomata, reducing the water vapour potential gradient and reducing the evaporation of water vapour from the leaf. The next one is we can have needle light hairs. Uh, needle like leaves sorry and that's for reducing the surface area for evaporation of water so if you think about it this is what Christmas trees are adapted to be like the pine trees and that's because they live in such cold environments that they have reduced water availability because the water is ice so it's a bit more difficult for the trees to take up the water so therefore they reduce evaporation from the leaves by having the needle like leaves Another one is that they have a dense spongy mesophyll. So this is the area here inside of the leaf. Now, the reason why they would have a dense spongy mesophyll is so that there's a smaller area for evaporation of the water from the vascular bundle inside the leaf into the spongy mesophyll area before the water vapor leaves the plant through the stomata. Other things to think about with xerophytes, they have a lot fewer stomata, which will be closed during the day. They're also found on the lower surface in the leaves rather than on top of the leaves to reduce evaporation again. They have a very thick waxy cuticle, which is waterproof and prevents uh, any water leaving through evaporation. They also have long, deep roots to take up water with a high solute concentration in the root hair cells. Now, they have a right high solute concentration because if they have a lot of salts and ions in the root hair cells, this will reduce the water potential inside the roots and therefore draw more water in via osmosis. Now, hydrophytes, they have something called erenchyma, which are basically uh, plant tissue with air spaces, and this allows buoyancy because they live in water and the hydrophytes need to be able to float. They also have uh, very, very large leaves to increase the rate of photosynthesis because water is not a limiting factor for them. They also have these special roots called pneumatophores. And uh, you know because they live in water, water is not a limiting factor of photosynthesis. The main limiting factor here is gonna be gas exchange and the gases involved needed for photosynthesis. So they have these specialized roots that grow out of the water to aid with gas exchange and therefore help to increase the rate of photosynthesis. A couple more things to think about with hydrophytes. They have plenty of stomata because water is not a limiting factor, which will be open the majority of the time. They'll also be found on the upper surface of the leaves because the bottom of the surface of the leaf is normally in contact with the water. So therefore, stomata is on top of the leaves. They also have a thinner waxy cuticle that there's no need to try and prevent too much water leaving through evaporation. Um, they also have a very short root system partly so they're not damaged by currents, but also so that the plant can meet its requirements for water um, where it is, because it lives in the water. There's no need to have long extensive roots to find water because it lives in water. It's readily available to the plant. So that's everything you need to know there on xerophytes and hydrophytes. Just remember when you're talking about xerophytes to mention the term water vapour and not just water. Guys, good luck with your exams. All the best. And don't forget, don't use the words it, they, amount and size. Use good scientific terminology to describe your answers. Good luck.